Hello everyone, I'm Yu Wang from the University of Science and Technology of China, and today I'm going to introduce our work, Learning Robust Recommenders Through Cross-Model Agreement. Uh, to begin with, I need to talk something about noisy implicit feedback. We will denote the true user preferences as R, and the corrupted observational data as R tilde. Then in normal training, we have the assumption that R equals to R tilde, as shown in this figure, which means interacted samples denote positive preference, and the negative instances are sampled from uninteracted ones. So this setting might raise the question, does the assumption really hold in the real cases? Uh, and the answer is definitely no. As shown in this figure, we have the real-world scenario. Uh, in the interacted samples, there might be factors that could cause the noises, such as the lack of explicit user satisfaction, which means interaction does not necessarily show that the user is satisfied, and in it, then it cannot uh, denote preference. And data biases such as popularity bias, position bias, etc., will also lead to the noises in the interacted samples. Then in the uninteracted samples, the exposure bias, which means the user might not be aware of the item, could, could be the major reason of the noises in the uninteraction samples. Uh, so in conclusion, there are so many reasons that could contribute to the noises in the setting of normal training, and R is not equal to R tilde. So this is the basic problem that, that we need to deal with. We we'll try to detect the noises through model differences. Uh, in the recent several years, plenty of recommendation models have been proposed, such as MF, GMF, NeuroMF, LightGCN, etc. Uh, and we know that different models tend to fit different parts of the data. And we tend to think, does the common part represent a robust data section? Uh, common part means the part that every model would fit well. Uh, so this is the motivation. Okay. Uh, through empirical study, we found that different models indeed make much bigger prediction differences on noisy data compared with clean data. Uh, the bars here in this picture means the mean differences between two models on clean examples and the noisy examples, and the data set we used here is movie lens. We also found that even the same model structure trained with different random seeds have the same trend in making predictions, uh, less, pre less differences in clean examples. Okay. Then here comes our main methodology, and we first need to give some notations here. The same as earlier, we denote the clean data as R, and RUI means a specific entry of the preference of user U on item I. F theta is a target recommendation model, and it should recover the true user preferences, which means Bernoulli F theta UI should approximate the distribution of the true user preference RUI. We also need another auxiliary model, which which also should cover recover the true user preference. The differences between F theta and G mu are what we need to detect the noise. Uh, for clean data or the ground truth data, according to our observations mentioned in the last slide, uh, different models should keep similar predictions in this part, in the clean data part. So the differences between the following two distributions should be small, since the predictions from F theta and G mu should be similar. Mm. We describe the differences with the KL divergence here, and I will omit the subscript of KL in the following slides. Uh, and minimizing the divergence here is what we want to do. However, simply minimizing the term should be, could be meaningless, since there are no supervision signals at all. So we need to introduce the signals from the noisy dataset R tilde. Since PF is our target model, as said earlier, it should approximate the distribution of the true user preferences PR. Then with Bayesian rule, we have this approximate equation. Uh, then we can substitute this equation into the formulation of the KL divergence, which would yield our objective. Uh, the left side of equation 7 is almost the final objective of DECA. The first turn of this objective means the expectation of the log likelihood of R tilde, while the second term means the model differences. Uh, so we need to mix, maximize the expectation of the likelihood and also minimize the mean differences, the model differences, which could which make a lot of sense. Uh, and it's also the lower bound of the log -like likelihood of the noisy dataset P R tilde, as shown in the right side of this equation seven. Mm. Then we copy equation 7 from the last slide. It's obvious that maximizing the left side equals to min minimizing the KL divergence of the right side. Uh, however, PG is a simpler model than PF, which means the KL divergence might be large. Then the gap between the cons constant log PR tilde and the objective 
may, may also be large. This, this could affect the optimization since we fail, we may fail to maximize the left side just because PG may have limited expressive power. So what about using PFR in this scale divergence, which means we will use a more complicated model to replace PG here. Uh, to do so, we need to modify the assumption of Bernoulli of theta UI as the posterior probability. We model IUI given IUI tilde with the target recommendation model F theta. Uh, so the KO divergence term in the above part could be rewritten here. Then with variational inference, we could simply obtain this equation. Then as for PR here, we use the pre-trained model that has the same structure of F theta but different random seed to denote this prior distribution, PR. And we will explain this design in the next slide. We made a small conclusion here with the comparison of DECA and DECA-P compared with the objective in the previous slide. We only add the reverse KO divergence and the hyperparameter alpha to make the training process more stable. As you can see here, the only difference between DECA and DECA-P lies in the KO divergence term. In DECA, PG is parameterized by another simpler model which reaches MF in our implementation. Which should, uh, which should model the same part as the distribution of the target model PF. Then in DECA P, we choose to use the pre-trained model with a different random seed to approximate the distribution PR. The design that we use the same model structure with a different random seed comes from the observation in the motivation part. Uh, this is a slide that I have shown earlier. As we observed here, even the same model structure trained with different random seeds have the same trend in making predictions. Less differences in clean examples. So this has inspired us to use the pre-trained model with a different random seed to represent PR in DECA P. Then these are the objectives for DECA and DECA P. In these two objectives, there are three aspects to be noted. The first one is that we have adopted the end-to-end -end training paradigm, and we also aim to denoise both false positive and false negative examples. Besides, this algorithm is model agnostic, which means you can choose any model you want, uh, as the structure of F theta. Then there is one final part in this objective, and we will, we will need to discuss how to model PR tilde given R, which is the first first term in these two objectives. We use, we use two H models to parameterize the probability distribution. H phi is used to represent a distribution of RUI tilde given RUI equals to zero. Then H psi prime will represent a distribution of RUI tilde given RUI equals to one. Uh, then we have used an iterative training strategy to, to train these two models. Uh, of course, we have tried to update H, H phi and H, H psi prime simultaneously in each step but we found that we, they will interfere with each other, especially in the early stages, which would prevent the H models and the target model to learn well. So as a result, we separate the training, tra training process into two parts, denoising positive and denoising negative. In denoising positive, we will replace H psi prime UI with one, and we will only update uh, H phi. And in denoising negative, we will replace H phi UI with zero and then update H prime, H psi prime only. As you can see here, if we do these two replacements in the same time, then we can, we are assuming R U I tilde equals to R U I, uh, R U I, which will be equal to normal training. So this means we will fix half of the training to be normal training, and then denoise the other half in each step. Uh, we will use these strategies DP and DN iteratively. Actually, with these re replacements, we will encounter log zero in the expanded formulation of the objectives uh, as R tilde. Then in normal training, we, can, we are assuming R uh, training to be normal. Actually, with these re replacements, we will encounter log zero in the expanded formulation of the objectives of DECA and DECA P. That we need to, we need two hyperparameters, C1 and C2, to represent these two log zero, respectively. And so that's all for the methodology. And then let's get into the experiments part. We need to first describe the experimental settings. We have used four datasets. Three of them are the rating datasets, and the addresser has the data of the dewell time of the users on the items. Uh, for the datasets with ratings, we construct the clean test set using examples with ratings equal to five. And for addresser, we use the examples with, which, with corresponding dewell time larger than 10 seconds. Note that we will first split the whole dataset into training, validation, and the test set 
then choose the ratings equals to 5 or dwell time larger than 10 seconds in the test site to form a clean but smaller test set. Uh, table 1 shows the statistics of the datasets, and we can see the sparsity of these four datasets here. Then as for the model and the baselines, we chose four base models, GMF, NeuroMF, CDAE, which is Collaborative Denoising Autoencoder, and like GCN. Uh, each model is trained with six strategies. WBPR, TCE represent sampling strategy and weighting strategy respecti respectively. Ensemble means we will aggregate the predictions from two models that have the same structure but trained with different random seeds to generate recommendation. And DECA, DECA P are our algorithms. The experimental results show that our methods are substantially better than the others. We can observe that ensemble methods perform almost the same as the normal training. This is not surprising, since in the test time, the data set is clean, so different models tend to make consistent predictions on the test set. Even if they make mistakes, the mistakes are still consistent. So ensemble methods could not eliminate these mistakes. This is the training curve uh, on three datasets. Uh, uh, we can see that compared with normal training, DECA and DECA P will suffer significantly, significantly less from overfitting noise data, which means our methods are much more robust. Uh, in the ablation study, we found that iteratively using DP and DN generally yield better results, which means denoising both false positive symbols and the false negative symbols in the training dataset is necessary. Uh, then for the hyperparameter study, we found that in most cases, uh, C1 equals to 1000 and C2 equals to 10 would yield the best results. This, this also justifies the design that we need, we need two numbers separately to represent these two different log zero. <coughs> then this is the model interpretation part. We have calculated the probability of a PI IUI equals to 1 given IUI tilde equals to 1. Uh, in the rating data set, we have the ratings data in the interacted samples, which corresponds to the samples with, with IUI tilde equals to 1. So we, we can perform the evaluation here uh, easily. The formulations of this probability are different in DECA and DECA P. One thing that surprises us is that though the calculation is quite different between these two strategies, the probabilities are similar since they uh, generally uh, potentially mean the same thing. Besides, as the ratings go higher, we found that the probability also goes higher. This aligns with our assumption that examples with higher rate, with higher ratings are more likely to be true positive. Okay, so this is the model interpretation part. Then let's go to the conclusion part. In this work, we found that models make more different predictions on noisy data. Then as a result, denoising can be achieved through cross-model collaboration. This is the main motivation of our paper. Uh, for the future work, we are thinking of generalizing DECA from binary labels to multi-class classification, uh, and we can also generalize this algorithm into other domains such as uh, image classification uh, or sentiment analysis uh, and so on. Then we actually have dealt with the auto-distribution data, i.e. the uninteracted data. So we may generalize our algorithm into offline reinforcement learning in which the auto-distribution problem is notorious. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your listening. Uh, thanks, Yu Wang, for a great talk. Uh, we have we have time for a few questions. Uh, audience, please feel free to to post questions in the chat. I ha I have actually two questions. Uh, the first one is: uh, Is there any intuition or or some theoretical support uh, on uh, why? different models perform similarly on on a clean data set and and the second question is about like hyperparameters like on definition of of a clean data set like uh, rating score five and well defined uh, 10 seconds how sensitive the modeling is on on the choice of these parameters and uh, why uh, ratings of zero and one are not considered as clean data set uh, okay okay uh let me let me answer the questions uh, first of all uh, uh, different models tend to make uh, different predictions on, on the noisy parts. Uh, it's our assumption at first, and we have, tr we have tried to do some empirical study to uh, uh, discuss this, uh, uh, this problem. And in our paper, we have drawn two, pa uh, two pictures uh, to elaborate this, uh, this observation. 
and uh, and it seems that has the uh, according to uh, what I know, I, I haven't seen many other papers uh, talk about uh, different models tend to make consistent predictions on clean parts. And uh, it's kind of our innovation here. And as for the sec second question, uh, C1 and C2, as you can see in the paper, uh, uh, in the in the picture that I have shown before, uh, actually in some data set, especially on, on mod close and the uh, the model is very sensitive to the hyperparameters, but in movie lens, uh, the, uh, the the model is uh, much less sensitive to uh, the hyperparameters. So it depends on the data set, I think. Uh, 